firefighters meeting is in 13 minutes. Ribbon, pink, orange. All right, we're here for the Sandwinder Enduro here in Smithville, Texas. I didn't get to race last week because of the rain out, so I'm super happy to be able to race this weekend. It's pretty cold this morning. It's like 33 degrees. It's gonna warm up to 60 today, so I'm just gonna put some rubber gloves underneath my gloves to keep the hands warm, put a neck gaiter on, and then that should be fine. I'm sure I'll throw off clothes as the day goes on. So I'm gonna ride my KTM today. I got the clutch, master cylinder rebuilt mostly worked okay I think there might be a little small air pocket in it which means I don't have the full clutch capabilities but it won't stall if I pull it in which is good what I'm gonna be working on today is uh, no blipping so what I've been doing is uh, actually since I switched to the fuel injected when I get into a corner I'll let off the throttle and then I want to roll onto the throttle in the apex and that's a really heavy hit on the uh, fuel injected bike it's a big difference from my my old car bike if you see me blipping comment down in the comments below. Chris, stop blipping around that corner. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna have fun today. Uh, my goal is to get a top 10. I was 14th out of 22 last year. It looks like there's gonna be 35 riders today. So more riders, but I'm a lot faster this year. Just gotta keep it on two wheels and have fun. All right, we had the riders meeting. So let's go and um, go hit up test one. I'm I did do it last year, so. All right, 2024 Sandwinder Enduro underway. Look at that, already up on the pegs. And I'm going pretty fast here, breaking pretty good into these corners. So I'm, I'm actually, I watched this back already and I was pretty impressed with my speed early going here. I normally, I'd say I normally don't ride that fast, uh, <laughs> but I am really, I'm trying to go really fast here. Of course, then we get into the wood section, which normally I'm a little bit better at the wood section than the open section, but I really tore that open section up from my standards. Qualifying that there, from my standards. So I've been going to Spoke Sand Track, just kind of practicing turns, practicing coming out of the corners. Yeah, the course is just already beaten up and only half the sea riders have gone. This is the first lap. So I passed my first person there, which is good. Second person. Yeah, so I've been going to spokes and really practicing getting out of the corners faster. And just getting on the throttle but getting on the throttle hard like twisting it really twisting it all the way to almost where I'm pinning it or I'm pinning it little mistake here that costs you just a couple seconds it's just more embarrassing than anything else I think sometimes I just get too hard I, I jam too hard on that rear brake Causes it to lock up. Whoa, causes it to lock up. There. Uh, That's always scary when your front wheel just gets kicked to the left or right, and you're just not expecting it. Like you don't see the object, so you're not bracing for it. I know you're supposed to ride with your elbows up, but you know sometimes they get a little lazy a little and. Bit of arm. That's something that I don't normally have to deal with, is arm pump. So, you'll hear me lean say, forward. yeah, right there. Gotta lean forward. 
So I think I was letting the bike pull me a little bit. Just the excitement of the moment. We're still in the first mile here. and First of many, many, many mud areas. Not a mud pit. Yeah, so I kind of heard this pack behind me and I just stopped and let them by. Now that Honda there, I think, was the one I passed in that open section, so... Oh, maybe not. That sounds more like a 250R. Whereas the one I passed, I think, was a an air-cooled bike. So you saw that late, just late on getting the throttle. I should have been on top of the throttle while I was still in the woods, like right as it was opening up. But I was probably 10, 20 yards out of the woods before I really opened it up. And that's something that I need to get better at for the hair scrambles that I race because the competitors that I'm racing are doing exactly that. They're opening it up. I thought I was in third there, but I guess I was only in second. Right as they right as they can, or as soon as they can. So you heard me say I thought I was in third, but I guess I was in second. I think there's a couple times where I actually didn't shift it to third properly, and then there's a couple times where I just got confused by the RPMs of third gear, like thinking it was second gear. So as you heard in the intro, I raced here last year. I think my average speed was right around 15 seconds. I'm sorry, 15 miles per hour, not 15 seconds. Um, yeah, that guy kind of just squeaked by me, didn't he? And so, I looked top 10 last year was 17 miles per hour and up. So I really wanted to get 17 miles per hour. I'll tell you how I did it at the end. Yeah, I look, ran into that guy there. And then I have a bad line up the rocks. Clutch is hating me. Get on that throttle, get on it. Yeah, just... I, so I'm on it hard here, but I need to get on it sooner. I don't know what those guys are doing. Just kind of like having a meeting in the woods. The second guy, I kind of saw him doing this. I forgot to mention that. So that's what happens when you ride in third gear. <laughs> you can hear it. I'm still in third gear. Like, RPMs are way too low for a four stroke there. So. You know, a lot of my friends like to ride in a gear higher in the woods, which I think is good because the throttle is less, it, it hits less hard when you jump on it and the engine braking is less on the four stroke, but of course you do either have to clutch or keep the RPMs up. Now, I'm not a big clutcher in the woods. A couple of my friends just clutch the hell out of it and they're a lot faster than me. Maybe I need to learn to do that more. See, I'm standing over these whoops. I did notice that the shadows are making it really hard to see the definition of the course through the video. So when it's live, you can see it really well. It's crisp. You can see all the features, the roots, the rocks, the whoops, the ruts. But coming through the video, you 
have all the branches and creating all these shadows and everything, it, it's a little bit harder to see exactly how rough it gets. This will come into play on the, the last test, test three. Test three is just okay. rough. So as I was saying, my goal here was to get a top 10. I know I need to go faster. I definitely start out faster. The bike I rode last year was a 2006 four stroke. It's not really that fast of a bike. It's heavier than this bike. So I'm riding a lighter, more nimble bike and a bike that's much faster. should be able to beat that time no problem. So I don't know if these are fast C riders or if these are A B master riders. I know I got passed a lot by the, the master riders and I I think it's frustrating on both sides so the sea riders are getting passed more often than they normally would, and the master riders are getting held up. Hey, look, I've stopped. I'm not. I wasn't counting, but I'm just. I probably have been. I stopped probably like. I had ten people pass me in the last minute. So. We're just losing time here. So normally when we race, we get to, we get to, um, tight out here, huh? Tight. Super tight. Oh, I just said it's tight out here, huh? But this is nothing compared to test three. Test three is super tight compared to this. This, test one is Woods first section and then is GP track the second half. A little mishap here. This guy's tangled up. So yeah, I was thinking about saying something to the race promoter. I don't know if they can have the Masters riders ride with the A and B riders, just not do as many laps. Or because they're doing more laps, the A and B riders, do they need less riders to be in those groups? So yeah, I talked to a couple B riders and they are like, yeah, it sucks riding with the C riders because We're having to slow down and, and pass and wait. And then the sea riders are getting frustrated because they have to pull over more. I'm also not riding very fast here at all. So as I was saying, we normally get a practice lap and then you're familiar with the course. And I didn't warm up at all before I started riding, but I definitely ride this section a lot faster the second lap. And then in test two and test three, I ride definitely a lot better as well. See, I'm just coasting here. I also hear a bike right behind me. Right. There's nowhere to go. Okay, I think there's nowhere to go. Watch, watch this. Guy does a little bushwhacking here. <laughs> He's gone. I'm just like patiently waiting. Oh, she's gonna pick up her bike and I'll just go. He's like, no, we gotta go. We're in a race. Sometimes I don't have that racer mentality like I should. I don't 
remember him being past this much actually. But now that I watch it back, yeah, I missed that turn both both times. It's a hard turn to hit because you're coming across that bridge going so fast. So I don't remember being past this much, but I'm getting past a lot. I definitely don't get past this much on the, the next two, test two and test three. So, <clears throat> kind of getting into the GP track here a little bit. We have one more wood section. I don't know why this guy's revving at me. Could have gotten right around me. And then he gets stuck over there on the left, so I just go. So yeah, there's lots of loose dirt here. Normally in the summer months, or when it's drier out, it's all sand. I guess that's why they call it sand winders, but right now it's just loose dirt and it normally when you ride in sand your front tire just going wherever try to get your front tire on top of the sand but I didn't really feel like this was like that at all where you had to do sand surfing in order to go fast on it or be in control if sand tracks were like this Normally, I wouldn't mind it at all. In fact, I really enjoyed this. Now, there's a couple parts where I get stuck in the mud later on that I didn't quite enjoy, but this GP track, really enjoyed. And my suspension on this bike is so much better than my previous bike. So I just switched bike like five months ago. I've been on that 2006 Honda for probably four years. My first bike. So this was a big upgrade for me. Oh, I forgot to tell you, 33 degrees. I think I said that in the opening, but hands are like hands are cold. stiff and cold. So I was kind of like moving them like this, try to get some blood going in them. I got some nitrite gloves underneath my regular riding gloves. They help, they definitely help, but my hands are still cold. That's gotta be an A rider. That guy was flying through here. Maybe B rider, B riders are really fast too, compared to me. Look at that technique on the left there at the shadow. That's one of the things I've been working on the last six months is just standing more. You can see me over to the right now. I mean, I wouldn't say my hips are totally just a bad turn, man. Bad turn. But I wouldn't say my hips are totally turned out, and my you know my back is arched a little bit, so I'm not engaging my core as much as I should be but it's such a big difference from the way I used to ride so I used to sit all the time this is just fun these whoops I didn't I mean I'm not going super fast but I had fun with them so I will admit <laughs> yeah I just got knocked by that branch I can go, I can ride faster sitting down. I admit that. Like the way compared to where I am now standing to where I was sitting, I can definitely ride faster sitting, but you just feel every hit, every bump, every root, every everything, you just feel it. By the end of the day, you're so super sore. Oh, this is a bad line, watch this. If that ditch was any deeper, I would have ate it bad.
Yeah, so when I ride slow, practicing my technique, my hips are definitely turned out. My core is engaged, but getting in a. I like to yell at the, the photographers. That's a horrible turn. But when I get into the race, you know, I, I'm still trying to engage my cores, trying to turn my hips out, but I do slack a little bit. I, can, I know that for sure. I've seen photos of myself. So it's just getting out there and practicing more. Got small kids at home, so practicing is not. Watch this turn. This is my best turn right here. That's probably my best turn yet. It's a sweeping turn, so I was able to get on the throttle right on the apex and just nail it, so that was fun. So I forgot to turn my watch on before we started. So I don't have any of the telemetry for this lap, but I did get telemetry for all the other laps. I'd like to see how fast I'm going here. I wish I was confident enough to just jump that. Yeah, those look fun. I mean, if you can... I don't even do the motocross jumps that are through. You can launch off of those, they look fun, but I don't have the confidence to do that bad turn there. Or I'm off the course actually. Sounds like I'm in third gear about to stall here. I mean I'm still going fast. If I had to say I'm probably going 35 there. I hit I hit the low 40s in test two, so we'll see what that looks like. But still, this is not perfectly smooth. Oh, shit. Sorry, I stalled, man. He wasn't. <laughs> he was not happy. I mean, I mean, totally my fault. Yes. Riding in third gear. What I'm saying there is if there's anybody who you shouldn't be following, it's probably me. Probably me. Um, he doesn't know that, though. And there he is, right there. Same guy. I think he was 670-something. Maybe 673? I don't know. But those numbers don't correspond to what row he was in. So... This GP track is so much fun. I think if I could just come out here and practice this, I gotta gotta ask the McMahons if I could do that. Like I would just like to come out here and do laps on this GP track because there's no jumps. You know, when I do a motocross track, I always have to slow down and roll the jumps. But what I need to do is find a flat track like this to just practice on. Okay, I always hate hitting those things at an angle. I want to hit them straight on, but that one just couldn't do it. That guy had his tips turned out. He was looking pretty good there. And then he sits down and just rails that straight away. So you want to go fast there, but in the back of your mind, you know there's a barbed wire fence sitting right there on the right. Any sort of like small little hiccup and it's not going to end pretty. So I think this is the faster of the 
test. So I think I was averaging 20 miles per hour. I looked after the first two laps and I was averaging 20 miles per hour. So the next two tests are definitely slower. But 20 miles per hour is pretty good for that GP track for me. We raced here in November in our Hair Scramble series, Torx, which is a Central Texas series, and we did this section the, the opposite direction. So it's kind of cool to come in here, for me, backwards. Let's see how I come out of this corner here. Rolled onto the throttle right at the apex, no blipping, that's good, and then just pinned it. Little late on the throttle on that one, but definitely pinned in the throttle and then right here to the checkout. Alright, test one complete. Boy, it's already chopped up. I feel bad for the A and B riders. <laughs> it's Rudy. It's oh, there goes my GoPro. It's Rudy, it's ruddy, it's sandy, it's muddy. It was a lot of fun, let me tell you. <laughs> I really apologize to that guy where I stalled and then he ran into me. I mean, if there's anybody who you shouldn't be following. It's probably me. Um, I apologize to that guy. I gotta figure out what his number was and send him a message. All right, well, we're gonna rest up for a second and then go out for test two. It's the same track. All right, so this isn't actually test one. It's just this test two. It's the second lap of test one. I gotta do two laps of test one, two laps of test two, and one lap of test three for 30 miles. All right, let's go do it. All right, so we're just gonna do the highlights for lap two because we just saw the complete lap one. See those roots, the course is getting... The course is getting chopped up. Yeah, I didn't really feel any of those bumps. I could feel the bike moving left and right underneath me, but I didn't really feel any of those bumps. rutted in the puddle. Yeah, I almost ate it bad there. Good thing I got Mark Busters. Slapping trees. Movement. Left and right here. Alright, here we go. Big spill on this route here. This diagonal route going down this hill. Let's see if you can see it. Front tire just hits that root and slides right out. Fucking root. <laughs> Apologize for the language. That's nice of that guy to let me in. And watch this guy, he lets me pass him again. I grabbed some front brake downhill in the sand and yeah, not a good combination. Why am I in these woods? Chris, come on, there's smoother ground over here. So what I need
need to be doing is going to the side of the trail where it's all smooth, but there I am riding right in the middle of the trail in the whoops. this turn. Oh, I was thinking of another turn. Sorry. Oh, here's the turn that I nailed the first lap. Not as good. Yeah, I think I did better the first lap, though. Stayed on the throttle longer. I remember I that. I think I mashed on the brake too hard and the bike just slid out from under me. I hit the back brake hard and the, really glad I the rear just came dirt. around. I, I saved it though. I felt like I was going a lot faster in test two. That was really nice. I only got passed a couple times so like the the, the amount of racers was less on the course while I was on it. I did have that one fall, that route, if you take that route, it's just unavoidable. You're gonna fall. It's just that, that diagonal wet route coming through that downward, uh, like four foot drop. You just gotta go around to the right and I should, I'm not saying I should have recognized that because all that happens really fast, but damn. That was the only thing I did wrong. It cost me probably about 15 seconds. All right, I'm gonna eat a sandwich here real quick and then go on to test two. So here we are, test two, lap one. I have to do two laps on this test. I saw it last year, but I was going the other direction. It's a good start. The other direction has two big trees going sideways on it. it makes oh, it for an interesting start. <laughs> Almost lost it there. Sure okay, so now we're hitting tests that have been done by the B riders and then when we hit test three that will have been done by the B riders and A riders. Come on Chris, ride your dirt bike. Oh yeah, I'm riding horrible here. But we do start to see some roots, um, some ruts develop here. You can see them forming, they just get worse and by the time we hit test three they're just a foot to two feet deep. <laughs> some are muddy, some aren't muddy. It's just like it's it gets ridiculous. Yeah, he was right. But we're still lots of ruts. manageable here. I'm not riding very well right now. Like, so there, well, I tried to avoid that rut. But I need to do a better job of avoiding these ruts because. Either you, you can, I, I tend to get hung up in them and fall, but you don't, you can't go as fast, so. I think I stalled in the same place on lap two. That's a nice job avoiding that rub, but. This is where we get into, so on test one, you didn't have these options where you could take multiple paths, but 
in this one you really get some options where you kind of have to do some trailblazing we'll get into that i think towards the middle of the test but there are some places where this test opens up into some grass fields and kind of like transfer sections in between woods. It's not, I don't want to say transfer section because that has a meaning in enduro, but um, but like some really fast sections in between the woods. This is where I get up into the low 40s, this, this test. You can see I'm riding a lot better. I'm riding faster, I'm standing up, I'm waiting the outside peg, pushing my knee into the shroud on the outside and I'm just carrying a lot more momentum through these turns than I was on test one so I almost fucking lost it there see how I come out of the woods here I didn't really get hard on the throttle before I shifted into third but something I'll need to improve because I'm losing like a couple seconds there and then I'm always hesitant to just let it fly in those open sections it was nice of him to pick his bike up right as I was coming through <laughs> but those open sections like they're never perfectly smooth. They're always a little bumpy. And I didn't grow up riding dirt bikes, so I don't have this mindset where nothing's gonna happen to me. So I'm always thinking something's gonna happen to me. Oh, I just take this horribly. Yeah. I kinda had to wait for him to pass me because he had caught me, but So yeah, I mean, like I know the faster riders are going like 45, high 40s in those open sections and I'm like mostly 35 to low 40s. I just gotta overcome that fear and I, I think that's just doing more riding. Kind of beating myself up here about like riding right in the middle of the trail again where it's smooth on the outside and the grass i should be over there and that smooth let's see how i do in this open section there i go see went right over to the right where it's like a little smoother i'm right on the edge now i'm right back in the middle but it wasn't that bad there it's bad when everybody starts breaking. I saw a couple of videos of people going to the left of that tree, taking the inside. I took the outside. Sometimes it's just where I'm comfortable. Oh, here, little mishap coming up here. Watch this. First of all, there's no traction on my tire because it's an old tire and I, I've ordered a new one already. All that for a... And concrete and dirt don't mix, we all know that. And so the back tire just went whoo, like just slid wheels. right up. So I'm encouraging myself to keep it on two wheels. This guy's nice, he's telling me to go to the left because everybody else is stuck <laughs> over to the right. If he hadn't told me that, I, I would have just followed everybody else right over and just gotten stuck. Thank you, whoever that was. Last two times I've gone out and practiced, I've really been working on 
blipping. As I said in the opening, I switched from a carb bike to a fuel injected bike. And when you get on that throttle, it hits hard. It throws you back. And then you let off the throttle, it throws you forward. So you're off. If you're riding in the pits in first gear, you're like, It's hard to ride smooth in the pits in first gear on this bike. First, I thought I was doing something wrong, and then I realized that kind of happens to everybody when they make that switch. So if I take that same mechanism of being throw forward and backwards into a corner, and I'm trying to roll under the throttle in the corner, the bike is compressing, uncompressing, compressing, uncompressing and just makes these corners very unsettled. I kind of, I've been listening to my last couple turns and I've actually been doing pretty good. Fucking whoops, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cursing the whoops. But, Woo, whoops, so I think I do a decent job in test two here. Test three, just throw it out the window. And I, I even say it in the video. I almost hit the rev limiter there. I must have been in second gear. I forgot to look at the speed up there. Was anybody else? I can't rewind it now, but was anybody else watching the speed? I know I hit 42 miles per hour in one of those open sections. That might have been it right there. Yeah, the last two times I've gone out, I've tried to just really focus on rolling under the throttle and staying in the throttle. Now, when you're in second gear in this bike, it wants to go. Like, I I hear a bike you tell it to me, but I can't be sure. You roll under the throttle and it wants to go, and sometimes being more of a beginner like me, you don't want to go that fast. You just want to go slightly faster. You know, roll onto the throttle, preparing to open it up, coming out of the corner. So that's what causes me to blip. I'm trying to break that habit. It really exacerbates itself in the woods. But um, hopefully by Sandwinders 2025, I'll have just mixed that habit. me and then he fell. I think this guy he's on a newer I think he's on a 250R but he does this pretty much throughout this whole test. That was a nice job avoiding that rut. That was a deep one. Look at these two ruts. Doing some trailblazing. <laughs> so he falls a couple times and I pass him and then he comes and passes me back. Because he's faster than me, but he just doesn't. He might not be as a woods rider, he might be a motocross rider, or I don't know, he might be overriding, I don't I don't know. Now here's me doing some trailblazing over here. actually doing better this year staying in ruts than I was last year. Like, I'm not scared of them anymore, which is good. Um, my front tire's not wanting to 
come out of the rut, I'm leaning more, I'm getting more comfortable leaning. I think this is just a product of me not being a motocross guy. Because motocross guys want to ride the ruts because they can turn faster riding in the ruts. And when I go on the motocross track, I'm like, I don't want to go in that rut. <laughs> but I need to, because you know, when you get on courses like this, there's ruts. So he goes down again. So speaking of motocross, we got Dallas Supercross coming up this weekend. I'm taking the kids. I don't think we're going to be able to make the whole fan fest. We're going to try to make it um, you know, as much as we can, but we have my son's got a playoff game in the morning, and then we're going to drive up to Dallas. So my oldest son is going to root for Tomac, but he says if he was betting money, he'd go with Jet. If he was betting his money, he'd go with Jet. Look at these ruts. Look at these ruts. Doing a good job staying out of them. Yeah, see, he's faster than me. He just keeps passing me and then let and then letting me by and then pass. It, it's like a yo-yo. But um, my second oldest is rooting for Webb. We actually got Webb's autograph last year, which was kind of cool. Oh, Cooper Webb was really nice because his autograph session ended. And as he was walking back to his trailer, I leaned over the railing and said, Hey, Coop. My son's your... He fell again. Coop. You're my son's favorite rider. Here's his motor. We brought his plate, his front plate. Can you sign it? He comes over. He signs it with a big smile on his face. So You hear stories about Cooper Webb being kind of... I think I got him to 33 there is what I saw. Yeah, so you hear stories about Cooper Webb not being the nicest guy. I've had one run-in with him, and he was super nice to us, so appreciate that, Cooper. If you're watching, comment down below. <laughs> the Cooper Webb comments on my video, I would be like, that that's the end of it. Like, I'm I'm I can only go down from here. I'm ending my YouTube career. I was rooting for Roxon, Roxon and Sexton when they were both on Hondas. I mean, I still like Kenny. It's kind of up and down. Chase had a bad year last year, even though he won the title. So now that I'm on a KTM and Chase is on a KTM, I'm still I still kind of root for Chase. You can tell he's putting in the work. He's fast. I don't know if he can keep pace with Jet, though. We'll see. Jason Anderson's been riding well this year. Kind of nice to see him and Jet doing a little battle. My son... My sons keep asking when is Bam Bam gonna put Jet into the wall, but I don't think Justin can keep up. <laughs> be honest. Thank you. I will have to say on this um, section, I don't get past nearly as much. So when we were waiting for section or test two, lap one to start. There was a ton of riders there because they extended the time by 30 minutes for test one. And I think all the fast riders just went up to the front. Like all the AB riders. And I was kind of near the back. And I think that's what we're seeing here is I'm able to ride at my own pace. I'm not getting... I mean, I've had a few riders pass me. But I'm able to ride at my own pace and not feel like I'm getting passed 
all the time like I was on. All right, watch this, watch. Chris, go right in the middle. Like, okay, I recovered pretty quickly, but I don't know why my front wheel just went right up the left there. <laughs> and then it's like, that's too steep. I kept the clutch in and got right back on. That was a pretty fast recovery for me. Yeah, so it's, Jason's been riding nice, Tomac, I think everybody was really excited to see Eli and Jet go at it, but hasn't really materialized yet. Tomac hasn't been as comfortable as he was last year for sure. Thank you. Yeah, so I think I've passed more people on this test than I've been past. It's kind of nice. Nice confidence booster. So you might be wondering why in that section, like uh, right now, I'm not riding very fast. Like I feel like I could be riding faster, but if you can see through these shadows, the ground we're on is just not. Oh, there was a kid. I got boys who ride, so I can't just let that kid sit there. He said, can you help me? He's on a 65 and he's you buried. Got he got it. Okay. So that guy stopped before the kid and was able to get to him faster than I was. Which is fine with me. I'm just gonna go on my merry way. I'll get stuck later, you'll see. Don't worry, don't worry. My time will come where I am not making any progress against the clock. Trying to come out of a corner in neutral. And you just wonder why why the bike's leaning over and falling down. So the braking going into the corner was great. You heard the chain slap and I've been working on that. But yeah, neutral just ain't gonna cut it trying to come out of a corner. <laughs> I feel like I'm riding pretty smooth here though. I'm not chopping the throttle. Uh, yeah, I almost had a Go, go, go! Yeah, there's the same guy. Guy that keeps falling. <laughs> this is the guy that keeps falling. Shit. Yeah. So I got up to 28 there. That wasn't a very long stretch. I think I got up to 42 on that that first one where I heard the really high revs, but I, I wasn't watching. It's 33. I must have had to have been second here. You can hear me chatting about it. Like, I don't know what was wrong. Should have been third there. That's a nice job staying in that rut, and then I got out of it. But for me, going like 28 miles per hour through the woods right there, that's that's pretty big. Like, I would have never done that last year. I would never have felt comfortable doing that. So I'm definitely getting more comfortable on the bike. Nice grass section here. That's about 
That's the fastest I, I was the whole race. I think I hit 42 on one of the open sections, which might be after this right-hand sweeping turn coming up. But I do not like grass fields at all. I mean, of course, the they, people who made the course went and checked. But if there's a hole that Thank comes you. up, you nothing you can do. You can't see it. You're just gonna, your front wheel's gonna dive right into it. Okay, so second lap, I go over to the right here. But on this lap, you don't know what's coming up. So I'm just going right through the, the mess here. And it gets messier. So what's weird is there's no leaves on the tree. You can see all of this getting plenty of sun. I got stuck there. I don't know why this didn't dry up. So we didn't have any rain the week before the race, but we had plenty of rain the week prior. And then the week prior to that. And so the ground was completely saturated. I just, with it being so sunny right there, I just didn't understand why it was still so wet. Yeah, so there's, these guys are just having trouble. There's a guy down in the creek there who's just completely stuck and he's just full throttle wide open. And I'm like, well, let me just go over here. Where it doesn't look like it's as bad. Definitely one of those sections that I'd like to see a sweeper on. And there was a guy helping second lap. I don't know if he was a sweeper or just a, a rider, but he was helping people. Got some diagonal roots in here, which sketchy. You heard me say my back tire sliding everywhere. Got people down all over the place. <laughs> it's carnage. Okay, if I were a sweeper, I wouldn't know where to start, honestly. Like, there's just so many people that need help. Stayed in that rut pretty nice. hear those fast bikes coming. Yes, I wanted to talk a little bit about enduro versus hair scrambles. So what I normally do is race hair scrambles. I got up to 27 on that. This is not bad. But I've never done a reliability or restart enduro. Only this is my second sprint enduro. I really like just being able to focus on me, my technique, me in the course, my bike, and not have to worry about racing other racers, racing other riders. One of the big potential issues of riding a hair scramble is the start. You got 30 people starting all at the same time going into the first corner just want to get through the start. <laughs> Basically, you can Jesus Christ. Whiskey, whiskey throttle. throttle. I don't know if I overgripped or what, but that was just a that was crazy. I'm glad I was going straight and not in a corner. If I was in a corner, I would have definitely gone into the tree. But um Yeah, so on a hair scramble, you want to get through the start and Want to settle into the race. I mean, people sprint like right away, like at least for the first lap. And you're racing people, 
So you're trying to pass them, trying to keep them from passing you. You have classes that start a minute behind you, you're trying to keep behind you. And on this, you don't have any of that. You don't have that extra worry about a rider coming up. So if somebody comes up behind you, you just let them by. Now it does take time to pull over and let them by, which that's unavoidable. I mean, you could ride faster and avoid it, but um, I really like this format. I really like not... See, I'm not racing this guy. I'm riding with him. I don't think I could ride any faster at this point. Like, I'm kind of letting him pull me a little bit, actually. And I'm keeping pace with him. But I have no idea where he started. Like, he's, he could have started ahead of me, and I could be beating him right now, even though I'm riding behind him. Or he could have started behind me and caught me and passed me, and I'm just trying to keep pace with him at this point. But I'm not racing him. Of course, we're in the same race together. We're probably in different classes, so... We're riding along, kind of like riding with each other, but we're definitely not. Look at this rut. Don't stop. Don't stop. I stopped. <laughs> this is where all hell bakes loose, right here. So I'm following this beta in front of me. This, this is the guy that keeps falling right to the left. There's a guy stuck right here. Look at this guy stuck up here. I just get in that rut, and then I see him, and then I'm like, ah, oh, I can't go anymore. I can't get out of this rut. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, I have to stop. And once you stop, you, you can't go again. So, I could try to sit and spin the wheel, but... I know nothing I could do. I'm tipping the bike, trying to get the back wheel to break loose a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here is put it in first gear and slip the clutch as much as I can. Try to keep that rear wheel from spinning to see if I can just get any traction. I was slipping the clutch so much that it just stalled. These guys all found a way through. Like, let me tip it over to the right. And then I tip it over to the left, and I see the back wheel come out of that rut. And that's what I want right there. But look, it's just caked in mud. Try to pull it. It's so heavy. So heavy. All I can think of is Ricky Carmichael in the 100 pound wheelbarrow right now. <laughs> That's true. Bike is heavy. Okay, look at the telemetry up there. Just that big red mess. It looks like a, a three year old crayon scribble. All right, I'll tell you what I did there. So my rear wheel was out. What I did was I spun all the mud off. So you can see, I can see the knobbies now. Rear wheel's not caked in mud anymore. Take my gloves off, because I know I'm gonna have to get my hands muddy. And if you get your gloves caked in mud, you're, you're just toast because you can't twist the throttle anymore. Like everything's slippery, you're sliding everywhere. So you gotta protect those hands. Now let's see if I can get this. Bike's 250, 240 pounds probably. Now my my left my left boot's stuck in the mud. And laying down like that, I think I probably have to lift like. I don't have to lift the whole bike, so maybe a hundred, hundred and thirty pounds of it. But it's still, it's just, it's stuck and it's heavy. 
so these two kids right here on the 65s, they race in the racing series, the hair scramble racing series that I race in. It was cool to see them out here battling these conditions. So I got the bike out of the rut. I still have to figure out how to free it though. It's still, even though the rear wheel's not in the rut anymore, it's still, the bike is still stuck. This guy's got a stick and digging his bike out. Let me try the front wheel. Oh, I got it to budge. That's my ticket right there. I just realized I'm out. That's what I wanted to do. Pick it up and roll it over. You hear the heavy breathing though. I'm just gassed at this point. I'm just gassed. Pick it up by the front tire. Pick it up by the front tire and roll it. No, on the other side, so I'm front like, tire. Hey, I did it. Okay. Let me let me just tell this guy how to do it. <laughs> now I'm the expert. You gotta flip it, the back <laughs> tire's stuck, yeah. I'm being sarcastic. I have no clue what I'm doing. Now I'm like, I'm completely gassed. Let me walk over here and tell this guy what to do. But he's stepping on his tire. I don't want to bend your No wonder he can't lift it. Oh, shit, that one's, that one's stuck. Now he's, his boot's stuck in the mud. You want to rock it that way? Let's try going that way. You ready? No. Hey, can you give us some help? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched this back yet. <laughs> I, I just always skip this part because I want to see myself riding and um, okay, push. I haven't actually watched push. this part back yet. Okay, we're going to have to flip it up on its handlebars. Just grab the... That 65 looks like... It's in here. <laughs> Alright, we'll deal with that one or next. Or something's on. going. So I'm just saying to this guy, let's let's get this one no, going. No, we're flipping it up we'll on its handlebars. Hey. It's not budging. I can try to pull it this way. This beta is just stuck. Now my, now my boot's stuck again. Oh, fuck. I got no energy left at all. I'm just... <sighs> reliving this, just... Back up. Sorry, dude. It is what it is. Sorry, man. Yeah, no, it is what it is, yeah. shaking my head just complete carnage there <laughs> okay I in my in my racer confessional or whatever you want to call it after this test I, I mentioned like where are all the sweepers and I'm I'm just looking out here. I don't see a single sweeper. Now, I know in 
Enduros are different than hair scrambles. Hair scramble is like a six to eight mile course, one course that you're doing laps on. Some, you know, sometimes they're 10, 15 miles. No, sometimes no, no, there's two no. to three hours. You'll get stuck doing that. And here I am, the expert I'm again. Gas, man, I just helped him. <laughs> and so, this guy is you just trying. You gotta have to flip your bike over. This guy is just trying to gas it out, and he's just getting stuck more. I understand that there's three separate tests in this, and they're all eight miles a piece. So that's 24 miles of track that they have to sweep on. They can't be in all three places at once. But this section right here is where I would be if I was a sweeper. There's this section, there's the creek crossing that we went over a few miles before, I'm sorry, a few minutes before. And then there is another creek crossing coming up that's, I think it's worse than the previous one. I feel bad, but I am absolutely gassed. Barely can ride out of here. So you heard me, I said, I feel bad. I tried to help him, but I'm just absolutely gassed. Like, I got no energy left at this point. So that took five plus minutes there. Yeah, that was interesting. Okay, so let me just go over the timings here. That was a five plus minute excursion. And then on the next lap, right before that part, I tried to help another guy. Okay, so me extracting my bike was five minutes. And then me going to help him was another two minutes, so that was seven minutes. And then on the second lap, right before that part, I tried to help another guy, another two plus minutes. So all in all, about 10 minutes of just time where the clock was ticking, where I wasn't riding, or I wasn't making forward progress. So even with all of that time that I just wasted or, you know, wasn't, making progress my average mile per hour was still two tenths of a mile two tenths of a mile per hour faster than last year so i was like 15.1 last year and i was 15.3 this year so just super proud of myself for going i think probably one to two miles per hour faster like my goal was 17 obviously i didn't hit that but I know I went one or two miles per hour faster than I did last year. I just don't know the specific amount if you take out that wasted time. So I'm happy with my performance here. I know I'm riding faster. I know I'm riding safer, like my technique's better. Uh, I'm recognizing things quicker. Oh, uh, here comes the blipping. I'm, I'm just blipping like crazy. That's just me being really tired and not focused on my riding the first half of this lap I was riding great I didn't hear very much blipping at all now it's all just <laughs> if you can laugh at yourself I mean I think that means you're having fun so I'm, ha I'm definitely having fun out here I still haven't caught my breath yet. I'm still just gassed at this point. Got a duck for this.
But yeah, so 2025, really I think my goal there is going to get up, be up into the 17s. I think the people who podium were on the podium in my class were in 18 to 18 and a half mile per hour. So, still got a ways to go to catch them. But it's all about small incremental improvements and having fun. And I'm doing that. I'm practicing. I'm getting seat time. On, recognizing bro, things really faster. I'm not hitting any marks right there. Just I was no, all over no, the place. Fine. But look at that rut. It's always nice when you come up among two people who are stuck and you know, oh, don't go over there. Like, I'm, I'm going to go way around here. I'll even slap that tree, but I'm not going in that mud pile. Well, that kind of sucked. I only got up to like 20 oh, there. <laughs> I was out of the rut there. A little scary. down and ups here. There's two of them. I think I'm starting to hear catch, catch my wind. I'm able to get back up on the peg, stand up, ride like I know. I'm still, I'm going way slower now than I did in the first half of this lap. I mean, I think it's noticeably slower. section. Let's see what I do with it. That's not, that's not very aggressive at all. A little bit more aggressive on that one. A little bit more aggressive on that one. I kind of think we're trail riding right now. Just trying to catch our breath still. I mean, not catch our breath, but just trying to get to the finish. That's the nice thing about Enduros, or Sprint Enduros. I mean, all Enduros, really. It's like, when you finish a test, you can you can rest up and, and get back for the next one. So if you've trained, or if you're in shape, which I wouldn't say I'm a heavy trainer, but I, I'm in somewhat decent shape, you're good to go for the next one. Whereas in a hair scramble, there's no break. You're, like if you have something like that happen where you have to expend all your energy, you're just you're toast. Hey, you're so done for. There's a for. ton of people getting stuck in the mud back there. Well, <laughs> you saw it. I don't think I need to explain it any further. That just fucking sucked. That mud pit. Okay, when you come up on it, it doesn't even really look like a mud pit. It just looks like there's some ruts there, and you just kind of go through, but. It just swallows your back tire. And once it swallows your back tire, it creates that suction when you're spinning it and nothing you can do. So I just had to flip my bike upside down to get it out. Some bikers passing here, but I didn't want to go with muddy gloves, so I had to take my gloves off. <coughs> once your gloves get muddy, there's nothing you can do. And then you're just gonna like, not have any grip but took my gloves off got my bike out washed my hands off dried my hands and then put my gloves back on tried to help that guy on the beta but i was just gassed after getting my own bike out and his wasn't budging at all feel bad for the guy sorry man there goes the top 10 not getting top 10 with that was like a what 10 or 15 minutes it, okay so it felt like 10 or 15 minutes i don't know what it really was but 
is a long time. It's ridiculous. <laughs> now, there were other people getting stuck, but they didn't look like they're in their 40s, so. All right, let's go do test two again. All right, so we're just gonna do highlights here again for this second lap since you already saw the first one. Chris. Same place. <laughs> Stalling is better than falling, you're right. Lost you like five seconds there. It's Hit really the brakes too hard. To stay on the throttle. Second gear in this bike is fast. Second bike in this gear is fast. Like staying on the throttle in second take? gear, even though I've gone from 52 or 52 rear <clears throat> to a 52 tooth rear, it's still fast. make it up so I know I need momentum to go up these hills and I don't have any so I've said let me roll back a little and get some momentum yeah so I went to a 52 tooth rear making a better wood so I can ride in third gear more Look at that bike on the left. It's just completely buried. Look at this rut. It's crazy. My clutch is hating me. Does that thing have a back wheel on it? If it did, I couldn't see it. The back wheel is just completely buried. third gear here because this my bike is wanting to stall here so I just split those two ruts right down the middle that's a good line I that's a good line <laughs> I know I'm blipping, but this is freaking hard, so excuse me. I talk so much during the races. trail rider like not a racer instinctively you're thinking I need to be on the trail so this is where I was talking about that this is not this is almost impassable here so this guy down in turquoise down in the creek is just spinning his wheel making that hole deeper. Then there's a guy over on the left down in there too, where this guy walking is going to help with. He tried to go up that hill to the left. Is it reversed? It might be a test for you guys, but. This guy's coming along. He's like, I'll try to come through. Is the right not working? This guy in the clean, the, sort of. the, the clean. Sort of. There's a big hole there now from everybody hitting that corner. Shit. He's looking for a way around, and there's barbed wire to the left, so you can't you can't bushwhack this. You have to go through it. It's either you're going up that little hill to the left, or you're going to the right where everybody has gone through and just made it so deep. 
It's so impassable. Great if there was a sweeper in here, but there's not, so we're just kind of left figure it out ourselves. So he gets his front tire up and out of the rut and just gasses it. And I'm like, well, he did it. I can't do exactly what he did, but I can follow that line. So what I did is got my front tire down into the muck, made sure I was perfectly lined up. Back tire was still clear, I could get momentum. Once okay. I was perfectly okay. lined up, I just gassed it. And I made oh, it. That guy was there. Do you hear that? Did what he did. I'm saying I'm glad that guy was there, because I just did what he did. If he wasn't there, I would have surely gotten stuck. Okay, so this is that creek crossing that's impassable. And I see these two guys over there. Like, I'm gonna go way over to the left this time. I don't know if this is a racer or a sweeper. Looks like he's in motocross boots. He's What's telling that? me to go. He said it's simple. He's like, go, you got it. I had it until I hit that little twig there that got caught up in my shroud and I'm like, I'm gonna rip my shroud off. Let me go back down a little bit and then I can go up. And he was right, it wasn't bad at all. But if I had gone down the, the actual main path, no way, never would have even made it back up out of the creek. I think I slip up on a root up here. Oh. There's a diagonal root lying across the trail. Where? They suck. Parallel routes, perpendicular routes, Fucking gonna thumbs up. Nightmares. Diagonal routes, About diagonal thumbs routes. down. <laughs> <laughs> if you try to if you try to hit one of those dead center, there, there's no way. There's no way. You have to hit it all the way to the left and all the way to the right. Or have momentum. If you have a lot of momentum, if you're fast and, and you don't care about like really getting hurt, then you can do them too. But that's not me. Watch these little whoops. I'm sorry. There's some big ones in there. Gas is so hard. You go down like that. No, I'm thinking of a different section. Sorry. on this course was great it was primo it was hero dirt except in a few small places it was really bad it was really muddy but loved it i just loved being out here i loved the dirt loved the course these corners you just felt like there's no way your bike's sliding out it's got great traction So I don't know exactly where I am, but I know I'm coming up on where I spent the five minutes. I know that's coming up in the next mile or so. I should count how many times I get whacked in the face. It's just, it happens so much. Just like, whatever. Whacked in the face again.
pass on the first test, right at the beginning. I'm in the wrong gear. Listen to this. I think I'm in third gear. It's, it's going to stall here. Must have pulled in the clutch because it really wanted to stall. I get a little bout of courage and I just attack sections like that. Need to bottle that up. Okay. Coming up on the death section here. He says, go to the left. And I said, what? So this guy starts sprinting. Straight that way. Second gear pin. Second gear pin. Little does he know, I don't do second gear pin. Watch this right here. You didn't see it, but that bike was getting close to 45 degrees. And I was going right into that tree right there. And I saved it somehow. Wow, so that one was, that was fun. You know, it's ruddy, it's all bumped out, whooped out, and muddy. But if you stand up, it's not really that bad because you, you have a dab foot, and if you slip out of the rut or you start to do something, you can dab, um, and you're just not absorbing all those bumps. So. I kind of liked it. Definitely did better that time than the first lap because obviously I didn't get stuck in the mud. One thing I'm surprised by is the, the lack of sweepers on the course. It is actually disturbing how they're leaving all the sea riders just out for themselves. It makes me really appreciate my home series, which is Torx in Central Texas. And there's just always a sweeper behind you at least a minute or two ready to help you if, if you get into trouble and out here there's no sweepers last year I saw a sweeper on test three which I'm about to do because basically there was a creek crossing with a hill and it was impassable and he was out there just making a new path it's the only time I've ever seen a sweeper out here on this enduro series and I like this series. This is the second time I've done it, and they, they're really nice. They got they run a great organization. They use live laps. You can go check to see your place right during the race. Everything is great. It's just all their volunteers are dedicated to scoring. They have four volunteers on the start of test one, two, and three, and four volunteers on the end of test one, two, and three. Damn, that's 24 volunteers they have scoring and no sweepers. Okay, no sweepers that I've seen on the course. I will correct myself. You're just gonna get people who are stuck and they can't get up. You saw that one bike that was stuck that I said, is, does that bike have a rear wheel on it? I'm gonna go back and watch the video and see if that rear wheel broke off or it's just buried. Like I, that guy just had to abandon his bike. That's pretty sad. So I'm having a great time. We got one more lap. I got a lot of energy left. Let's go do Test three, we only have one lap, eight miles left, and then we're done. Test three is the hardest. So for the sea riders, they of course save it to the end. And there's supposed to be more mud on test three than there was on test two, so I don't know. Hopefully there's, there's ways around it. We'll see. He's like, go. Go. <laughs> you just got clocked by the check-in RFID. It's 
So I watched this back already. I was actually really disappointed with how I started this section. Like I'm going up this long hill here. I'm not attacking it at all. It's not really that whooped out or anything. You got this one little downhill here that I was taking it easy on because I didn't want to fall. But All right, watch this. <laughs> I get stuck right off the bat. I'm like, no, not again. <laughs> so yeah, I was a little bit disappointed with how not aggressive I was at the start of that. Uh -oh. Double creek crossings already. Here we go. Here so we go. the photographer that got me what was, was in one of these creeks, and I just don't know which one. I think it's in the next creek crossing coming up shortly. Because I took the next one a lot with a lot more momentum. Damn, three creek crossings. I'm like, oh, there's a race here? And then you got that route from hell coming up out of the creek. My friend Jay there. I'm still cracking up at that guy. He's like, this way, second gear pin. I don't do second gear pin. <laughs> I don't, very rarely do I pin the throttle. And maybe I need to. Some of those open sections, I should, should probably be pinning it. Here we go. I actually went out and practiced one time just pinning the throttle. Third gear pin on this bike is like, oh dang, that, this bike goes when you tell, because the KTMs, I think the Honda, their oh, peak horsepower is like in the middle of the RPM range, but the KTMs in the top. Definitely not cheap. Hit those branches. <laughs> Almost hit a tree. Watch this bike on you the okay? right. It's buried. Look how buried it is. Damn, he just couldn't get it out. Almost hit a tree, hit a tree, hit branches. I'm just like slapping off everything. Okay, so I see these ruts and I try to go left. But my back tire was still in the rut. Couldn't get it out. Finally got it out. So this is test three. The A riders have hit this. The B riders have hit this. And all of the C riders have hit it. I didn't want to get caught in any like backups or pileups, so I waited a good 30, 45 minutes. I let all the sea riders go ahead of me. That way I just had a clean course in front of me. At this point I was still thinking like maybe I could get into the top 10. I should have not felt that way because of my five minute excursion in the mud. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And I actually really liked being out here with no other bikes. Just trying to tackle this test and ride it as clean and as fast as I could. Now this test is tight. It gets tighter than this. There's ruts, there's deep ruts, it's tight. And the soil is different, I'll tell you about that. The other two tests we had, I heard somebody behind normal me. dirt, sandy sandy loam dirt, and, and a lot of roots. On this one, we had loose dirt with rocks. Sometimes they were small rocks, sometimes they were big like golf ball rocks, sometimes they were softball rocks. But you had that mixed in this really loose dirt. And it made for a very uneasy feeling as far as getting traction and, and feeling like secure, feeling like the bike was planted, feeling like you weren't gonna slide out or go crazy or just, just whatever, I don't know. It actually doesn't come into play a whole lot 
until you get to the downhills, the downhill turns that are rocky and loose dirt. And then you're like, oh crap, it's a really bad combination. Whatever you do, do not touch the front brake. <laughs> and there, you'll see, there's, there's one turn where I screw up, I hit the front brake and, and that, this guy is flying. If he's a C rider, he's gotta be a B rider. Look, he's gone. So I really enjoyed being out here sort of by myself. I mean, I think I get passed by like three people, three or four people, and then I pass a couple people. I know there is a, a woman's rider behind me because I was talking to her at the start of this test and she rides in our hair scramble race. So I am kind of tuned into the fact that I really need to be aware of bikes coming up behind me because I knew she was in the top one or two positions in her class and I didn't want to like block her or screw, screw any of that up. So I'm riding, I'm, look at me bushwhacking here. Um, I'm bushwhacking, I'm trying to miss all the ruts, the deep ruts, I'm trying to keep the bike on two wheels through all the loose gravel and, and rocky stuff. I'm zigzagging here like crazy. But then I'm also kind of tuned in to like bikes coming up behind me as well. It's like go fast, but stay out of the ruts. So you see I just went right off course there. Now I gotta go rejoin it. Seven, I think there. So a little tentative on that. Should have been in the 30s. So that's how GNCC started last weekend, same weekend as our race. Telling myself to breathe there. So there's a writer I've been following, um, Jesse Ansley. He did GNCC, but then I don't think he did it as much last year. Uh, he went back and did more Florida Trail Riders. So I've been watching some of those races. They have so much sand down there. I used to live in Central Florida, so I know all about that sugar sand they ride in. Definitely different from the. Central Texas sand that we have to deal with. But he's back riding GNCC and Stuart Baylor. Follow him a little bit. He actually ended up getting second. They're both actually on Kawasaki's. I think uh, 450, 450X's. So that's interesting. You don't normally think of a Kawasaki as like a big woods bike, but. 2023 Kawasaki's are pretty popular, the 2023 450X's. And Kawasaki pays good contingencies too, so if you're a privateer like Jesse Ansley, and um, I know in Supercross they pay double contingencies. I don't know about GNCC. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I don't know. Let me know, comment in the comments below. That's why you see so many privateers in Supercross on Kawasaki's. That rut was deep, but I did a good job going to the right. All right, so I open it up here. Oh, I was thinking that this was that straight section, but it wasn't, because I saw the barbed wire fence. Barbed wire fence is going to come into play in a minute. I could 
ride faster if there wasn't ruts. These huge ruts. I'm just doing, trying to do a good job of maintaining momentum. Hit the ruts that I think I can do fine on, and then miss the ruts that I think I'll get stuck in. So opening it up here was kind of tough because you're two, three feet from a barbed wire fence and you don't want anything to go wrong there. I mean, it's happened to a lot of riders getting mixed up in that stuff. It's not pretty. Last second, I decided to go to the right of that tree, but you saw I was heading right towards it. <laughs> All right, so I mentioned in the previous test, restart a reliability Enduros. I would like to do one of those. It's tough for me because this is the only one in our area. This is a sprint Enduro. It's the only Enduro in our area, except for the summer. There's a summer series of sprint enduros. They're a little bit shorter. But our hair scramble series that goes January through December and we take a break here in the summer in Texas because it's just too hot. But those are all local races. Those are, I think the farthest one away from me is like an hour and a half. They're all an hour away. But these Enduros, even though it's a Texas series, some are in Oklahoma, some are in Louisiana. They did one in New Mexico last year. And even the ones in Texas. All right, if you don't live in Texas, you don't realize how big Texas is. So like we're in Central Texas, and if there's an Enduro in Lubbock, which is in Northwest Texas, that's eight hours away. So Red Canyon Enduro, I think was in January. It's like an eight hour drive for us. And so the next one coming up is Cross Timbers in Oklahoma City. That's out of the state. I mean, it takes all day just to get to the Texas border. That's why I that was the one down. turn I messed up on. So I slowed down, I saw the rocks. <laughs> I got twitchy, hit the front brake. And now instead of my, the bike lying on its side like this, the bike is down at this 45 degree angle. My feet are like two or three feet below the bike. And I'm having rocks. to lift it up I knew something and then like up that again. Shit was gonna it, happen. It's heavy, it was hard. That was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Thought something bad was gonna happen and something bad did happen. Yeah, so I saw back to the Enduro thing, I saw a video of Cross Timbers, which is in Oklahoma City, and it's a nice flowy track. It looks like I mean it's just something if you can get in a good flow. It's a nice rut there that I took, stayed in it, which is fine. But um, it's not, the test that I saw is not like this at all. It's just flowy turns and a little bit of woods, but it looks fun. That is coming up May 10th, I think. But we have a local hair scramble that weekend at a new place that we've never ridden at, which I think is a little bit more appealing I mean, for me, I haven't ridden both places, but do I want to go 10 hours away? I don't have an RV, so I'd have to sleep in the tent. And I got small kids at home, so that puts kind of pressure on my wife. Or I could just wake up Sunday morning, 5 a.m., drive to the local race and be back at home for dinner. It's one hour of riding, like we get, we do a practice lap and then a 70 minute hair scramble, whereas the enduro is kind of like 
8 a.m. to wow. 3 p.m. Oh, with some transfer go. sections in there. So I mean, you do ride a lot more ride miles. You get a lot more riding. You get more seat time. But you're driving more than 10 times the distance. So I'd like to do it. Um, I think my small kids need to get a little bit older and then I'll be able to bring them with me. It'd be nice if we could eventually get an RV, but if we get an RV, we have to get a truck that can pull it. I would like to go faster here, but these whoops just keeping me good. Now, this, see, look at this downhill and then this downhill into a turn with the loose gravel. The rocks make it so uneasy. It just makes you. You, you just don't want to wreck there. So you just go super slow, or I do. And I pick the speed back up and this a lot of straighter. I've never seen a race with so many people just sitting on the side, just not able to even go. This is the first time I've been in a race where I've just seen so many people on the side, just can't go, I'm done. Like they're either gassed or their bike's broken or it's crazy. <laughs> or their bike is sunk. Like those other guys that we saw at the beginning of this test. Literally, the bike is sunk in the mud. So yeah, it would be a nice to do a season of Enduro. Um, I don't think the promoters for this series are talking to the promoters for the hair scrambles that I normally do. Because four of the eight Enduros this year are on the same weekends as the hair scramble races. So that kind of stinks. So like, let's say I wanted to do both of them, I, would, the I wouldn't even there. be able to compete in both series. I'm not really racing there, I'm just basically trying not to fall. Yeah. A lot of blipping going on there. Clutch is screaming at me. So I was talking after this race to Brian, oh, I can't remember his last name, go. but he does the seat time uh, Instagram channel and YouTube as well. And he was telling me about this race in Arkansas, it's in Northwest Arkansas, I can't remember the name of it, but it's part of this T-Sex series. It's coming up this summer, I think it's in May or June. He said it's pretty difficult, like it's challenging. And I said, is it challenging like this test, like test three, where it's a lot of up and downs? It's like, so this test has a lot of up and downs, but they're short up and downs. He says the up and downs there are like, you know, they're mountains. So you go up and you just go up for a while. He said it's also very technical. I think I hear a bike behind me there. Yeah, so I need to find a place to pull over. There goes Kirby. She caught me. Damn. <laughs> She's trying to keep her behind me. Yeah, I knew she was going to start a couple, start minutes, a couple behind minutes behind me. Behind me. And I was thinking to myself, okay, She's let's... Fast, She's fast. Let's try to keep her behind me. I'll, I'll just stay in front. She's fast. Like I looked at her lap times and Am I in first gear? No, I was in second. I think
think she was one hour 30 and I was one hour 70 maybe. I think, is that right? Anyway, she finished like 30 minutes ahead of me. It was like, that is a, that's a big gap. I don't think it was that big, but it was big. Um, so yeah, my dream of like, either keeping her behind me or trying to latch onto her rear tire here and, and see if I can keep pace, no. Like, it's just super fast. That's cool. There's like, um, the women riders usually start behind the C riders in our Hair Scramble series and they end up, most of them end up passing me in, in the race. Half of them end up passing me on the first lap. <laughs> they're fast, they're fast. So as I was saying, I was talking to Brian from Seed Time. He was telling me about this race in Arkansas and it's pretty challenging, he said. It's technical. And I said, oh yeah, I don't really do log crossings or anything like that. He said, oh yeah, you've got like a couple months to learn. You just learn. He says, it's beautiful. You come out to these vistas. You come out to these views that you just never imagined were there. And he said one time we were doing it and it was foggy and it was kind of like, not spooky, but eerie feeling. Got that eerie feeling. Let's see what I get up to here. Shift to the third. I think I got up to 27. There just wasn't really enough room to get up into the 30s for me. I was on first gear. I was in first and I shifted up to second. That's why I didn't end up going very fast because I didn't carry any speed out of the out of the woods. So that race in Arkansas is an example of like something that I'd really like to do. Like it sounds fun. It's I think it's a reliability enduro. And it's technical, it's challenging, it's got elevation changes, it's in the mountains, it's cool but it's nine hours away. One way. <laughs> okay, so that means you're going up either on a Friday or Saturday. If you have an RV, great. You can sleep in the night, Saturday night. Wake up Sunday morning, race. You're starting at 8 a.m. You're going to like 3 p.m. or 3 or 4 p.m. Because the sea riders would do like the short course so it's usually like in between 30 or 40 miles and then you sit there and you recover after your race you hydrate you eat pack up your rv whatever so you're like getting out there at five or six and then you drive home and you're getting home at like two or three in the morning and you're going to work the next day now probably do that and if I were younger I'd probably be all over that. I was about ready to open it up. <laughs> <laughs> I almost went the wrong way there. <laughs> I saw the I saw the uh, the fire road or whatever that is and I was like ah, I'm gonna open it up. Oh no bad line. But you get to this point of like okay that sounds like an incredible experience. This rut is just Let's get out of this forever rut. and I'm in it. I can't get out of it. There I finally get out of it. It's ridiculous. So you start to do this cost-benefit analysis like, oh, this race sounds really great, but it's a lot of gas money to get there. It's a lot of drive time. I'm going to be a zombie at work the next week. I'm going to be sore, but it's a good sore. It's a bit fun sore. Do I really want to go do that? So. Right now, with small kids at home, it's kind of like, nah, it's not really in the cards. It'd be fun, but it's not really in the cards. So I think I'm gonna probably have to wait three or four years till the smaller kids go. They're up, they're a little bit older. But so there's that one, there's the Raging Cajun race in Louisiana, which is a 100 mile race. 
and even though the sea riders don't ride 100 miles or they don't race 100 miles they still encourage you to like ride the full 100 miles like i guess through the transfer sections or something like that i'm totally about to stall here just bushwhacking around these ruts not easy oh shit there's the shady burrow enduro in colorado which is um a co-sanctioned enduro with Rocky Mountain Enduro Circuit. I don't think they did that last year. It's like they could get the permit from the Forest Service. I don't know if it's on this year or not. Uh, they did one in Cloudcroft, New Mexico. There's two of them. There's one in Lubbock. And there's a couple in... There's one in East Texas in Gilmer. It's Barnwell Mountain. That one looks fun. And there's a couple in Blackwell, Texas. I think there's one reliability and there's one sprint. So they're all over the place. And they actually took this series and they split it into three series this year. Yeah, you could see that happening. I was just turning too tight. Now my foot peg is stuck on the tree. I killed the engine. I should have just pulled the clutch in and pushed it. Alright. So now we're unstuck, but here comes a rider behind us. So there's eight races in the park that's for Central Texas. And then there's like a championship one, which has a couple two-day races in it. So I hear him. I'm like, oh, let me just take a water while he passes me. Water break. This guy actually races in Torps, which is the hair scramble series we're in, and he's in my class. I could tell because he had the sticker on his helmet. So I know that was a long story about enduros and hair scrambles, but yeah, I think at least for the next couple of years, um, I can do this sprint enduro, which is in February in our area, but other than that, it's going to be tough to get to any of the other ones. I think the format really suits me. Oh, so tight. I'm not much of a bar banger when it comes to the hair scrambles. I'm more of like, I have to go to work the next morning. I need to not get injured. I did get injured last year. I was out of off the bike for like three months. So I'm a little... Concerned about injury as well. So this format where I'm just so oh did you God, see I'm that? that log. Went bushwhacking over to the right, and then other people had the same idea, and there was a rut over there. <laughs> We're just in a tough section right now. A lot of ruts, a lot of shade through here, a lot of long ruts. can't see it but and I don't it's know mud I'm in first gear, honestly. through that whole section you can't stop you just gotta keep going if you stop you're dead you're stuck I think I'm doing pretty well in this section went in a couple ruts I've avoided a lot of them these little up and downs are fun. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm racing through here, because if I was racing through here, I think I'd be more aggressive on the throttle and then braking coming into corners. But I'm also not trail riding it either. I think I'm trying to 
find a flow or a rhythm where I can not necessarily maintain a constant speed, but maintain a smoother speed. Which is not necessarily the fastest way to get from point A to point B. But it is a fun way to get there, and I know I'm not going to be on the podium. Conditions. Look at that guy. He's duck paddling Thank through you. that rut. The conditions kind of make it to where you're like, I, I just don't want to ride as fast as I can through here. Because if I do that, I'm probably going to get hurt. And I'm having a lot of fun riding this way, or riding this course. It's, it is a lot of fun, and I even say it on the video, like how much fun I'm having. And it's not easy. It's challenging. But it, I sure did have a blast. I just came out, I came off of this test and off of this day just having so, so much fun and just thinking to myself, wow, that was a lot of fun. Got stuck in that rut, but once you get in the rut, you gotta stay on the throttle. You cannot let off the throttle or chop the, watch what happens right here. You saw that root, right? If anybody's gonna get stuck on that root, it's gonna be this guy right here. So I know I can't just power over that root. I gotta, I was trying to rock the bike back just to get at least six inches of momentum so I could pop that back tire up off of that root. Finally, I was able to rock the bike back far enough to be able to get a, a little bit of a run up on it. Bushwhacking. Woo! It's fucking exhausting. It's exhausting. That's what I said. It is exhausting. Sure Doing all this bushwhacking, and you're like, man, I hope the property owners aren't watching this video. They're gonna see me tearing up their woods, going left and right. I'm off the trail. <laughs> It's really hard with the shadows to see the texture of the dirt here, but when you see these deep ruts, it's mud. Like right through here, this is all mud. So you want to try to avoid going through there. Alright, one of these two guys is out of commission. Okay? So his buddy's bike was broke and he needs a tow out. I don't know how they're gonna tow him out of here. Like, I see the service roads, but how are they gonna find him? Anyway, you'll see up at the end, I tell them 82B is stuck and needs a tow. I don't know how they're gonna get there though. So look at this, no more ruts, it's drier, got a little banking, you can get some lean angle on. This is a lot more fun to ride on. And now we've got the whoops and I'm slowing down again. I'm still standing strong though. Last year I did not stand at all. I was not a stand-up rider. I was so sore. My rear just... I don't know how to describe it. It was like... It wasn't like painful, like staying painful, but it was sore. All those bumps, all those whoops, just... We didn't have the ruts like this last year, but... I was sore. 
after the end of the last test last year, talking to a couple of guys, some guy, somebody's like in his 60s or 70s, he comes up and he's like, I'm not sore at all. He's like, I just stood up the whole time. That is genius. <laughs> So, over the course of the last year, I have been forcing myself to stand and to learn standing riding technique. One of the best videos I've ever seen was a Chris Birch video. He's the New Zealand guy. Um, his website is Say No to Slow and... Oh, shit. Oh, Chris. You're an embarrassment to all sea riders everywhere. <laughs> Oh, Chris, 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 Chris. So, he has a great video on standing technique, weighting the outside peg, shifting your weight, turning your hips, so your your rear is over the outside peg, it like shifts outside the bike frame. Your knee presses into the shroud of the bike, and it's got a, like a good way to teach that and for some drills for you to do. So I've been working on that. And it's great because when you weight the outside peg like that, the inside foot you can dab with freely if you need to. But you don't feel all of those bumps that you're going over, like the roots, the whoops. The bike will get up and go if you tell it to. All that feedback that you're getting from the bike, you don't, it doesn't hit you like it does when you're sitting. You can do 40 miles like I did, or 60 miles like the A riders did. Can't tell it to in these tight woods, though. You come come away and you're like tired. Your legs are a little sore, but your whole body and your rear is not sore. So I I thoroughly enjoyed this today. I'm just gonna get better at standing. I will admit I can't ride as fast standing as I can sitting. Looks like I got up to, was that 27? But like standing over these bumps and these small whoops is fine. Like your bike just absorbs them all. I can't ride as fast when I'm standing up as I can when I'm sitting down. But I enjoy it a lot more. I am getting faster. I'm learning how to lean way over the handlebars when I have to accelerate, that kind of stuff. There is one caveat. I think it's super tight. Like a 180 turn, or you, you have two trees that are like close together and you have to turn into the trees, or in between them, in, in, in the middle of a turn. I'll sit in that kind of stuff because break, 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 break. I'm so much more confident about hitting a mark sitting yeah, than I am yeah. standing because I, I learned to ride sitting. It's holy hell difficult. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but I just said it's fun. But it's it's fun. holy hell difficult, but it's fun. I think next year my standing speed will be better. This barbed wire was like, I was like, oh, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> I think I'll be, at, I'm gonna, this year, this next year until 2025 Sandwinder Enduro, I'm gonna practice standing flow, like being able to flow, standing up better. I don't, I don't think it's the right thing to do to stand all the time. I mean, definitely want to sit, like coming out of the corners and accelerating and stuff like that. But I need to get better in both flowy woods standing and tight wood section standing. I need to get better at both of those. I need to get it to where my speed is more equitable 
sitting speed. You can see, man, this is just, this test three is so much more difficult than one or two. Just the terrain, test one and two are flat. Test three has elevation. Test three has the rocks and the loose dirt. Test three is a lot tighter. And this time, it had all those deep ruts. And deep, deep ruts. And the mud, mud deep ruts. This is a long downhill. I'm trying to get on the throttle, but I'm just apprehensive about getting on the throttle hard going on such a long downhill in the tight woods. I need to get back up to Sea Tour, which is Central Texas off-road, which is a lot of tight riding with rocks and roots. And it's, it's got some difficult sections I need to get up there and practice. A lot of times I'll just go up there and ride, but I'm not practicing riding fast. I need to do that this year. about to stall again. As soon as I stand, I just gotta sit right back down. It's so tight. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Some of these turns are so tight that I'm almost sitting on every single tight turn. So I gotta get better at standing. Ooh, this is so much fun! Yes! Standing in the super tight stuff. Eighty. 82B needs a tow out. I'm sorry? 82B? Uh -huh. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Had such a great time, and thanks for being with me. Like this video, subscribe. It's about um, a mile or two. Okay. Okay. 82B. That was so much fun. I am. I'm not as wiped out as I was last year. I'm, I'm in better shape. I'm riding better. My technique's better. I'm standing more. Uh, last year, at every single one of those bumps, just jolted right up through my body, and at the end, I was just done. But today, I feel like, you know, it's the end of a normal hair scramble race where I could probably ride more. Uh, I'm not saying I'm gonna go ride the whole thing again, but feel great. Definitely was blipping a lot more than I wanted to. Just need to figure out how to roll onto that throttle in tight wood section safely. That's what it comes down to. I can do it a lot better on a track, but when it gets tight woods like that, I end up rolling on, rolling off, rolling on, rolling off, and it just creates this unsettledness for the front tire. It's not good. And, you know, we all want to ride safely and you know obviously some people ride out of control but i'm not riding out of control that's all here from mcmahon ranch and the 2024 sandwinder enduro might have to rebrand that mud winder this year i'm not trying to be funny it just it wasn't a mudder but let me just tell you it was muddy muddy for sure it was fun i think once i learned on that last one to go around the big deep ruts was having a lot more fun. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.